Okay, welcome to our webinar. Uh, today, uh, our topic is going to be endocrine uh, physiology part one. And today we are going to talk about general scenes uh, and some specific scenes that are actually uh, related to this level of anatomy that we are uh, having in this course. Okay, so let's start. Let's start for uh, uh, most uh, simple things is that uh, what is the endocrine system and we already talk about we already know about all the glands that eight type of glands and where are located etc so endocrine system composed of various glands and secretions whose primary roles include control and regulation so at this level we just going to focus in how the the hormones are going to have a control and regulation of what? So hormones have a control and regulation of what? Metabolism, the growth, homeostasis, cellular communication and reproduction. So for example, metabolism, how these have hormones have control and regulation? Okay, so if we think about, for example, the growth hormone, right? Or for example, we are talking about the thyroid gland. So metabolism is T3 and T4, for example. Growth is the hormones what we are going to make the thyroid gland is to produce T3 and T4. Control and regulation. Growth. The, uh, this uh, 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 pituitary gland is going to secrete an hormone who is going to make some actions, for example, in the muscles or in the bones or in the cartilage, right? And for example, we have another 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 homeostasis, for example, are related to what? For example, to the secretion of the ADH, the antidiuretic hormone. As reproduction, we have the FSH and LH. Uh, we are going to see another uh, the cellular communication. That is a general term for all the process that we are going to see in a few seconds. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so here uh, we are going to talk about the first thing. I want to, there's some few notes probably could be a good idea to have about this. Uh, if you have some other question, please just let me know. So we have two types of proteins. These pro two types of, uh, I mean, hormones, group of hormones. The majority of the, of the hormones are going to be based on proteins, protein base. So we have the, uh, uh, sorry, the protein base. Protein based hormones mostly are going to be all the majority of hormones. Uh, what is important about this? Uh, I will tell you. Uh, first of all, we, for example, we have the I will uh, we have the growth hormone, we have the um, prolactin, we have the TSH, we have the LH, FSH, the ACTH. All these hormones are based on proteins. More than that, not only proteins, but more more specific, we need to talk about about peptides small chains of amino acids, okay? And some of them are amino acids too. What is the, the, the concept that we need to remember about proteins, hormones, is that this hormone is number one, is the what we call the first messenger, is the first messenger. This first messenger, uh, small chains of proteins are too big in order to pass the membrane. So are very are big to pass the membrane. So they cannot make any effect on the cell. So what they are going to need is a second messenger. This second messenger, where it's located, are going to be located in the cell membrane. <coughs> the pro imagine the protein coming to the receptor from outside the cell, right? So they're coming to the receptor, and the, because this protein cannot pass the cell membrane, this protein is going to activate this receptor in the cell membrane. This is, the cell membrane is a protein that is going to activate the second messenger inside the cell, very uh, inside, in the inner side of the membrane of the cell. 
So they are make that transition of communication from out to in, side to cell. And that is the second messenger. Again, who is our first messenger? The hormones. The hormones are too big to pass, so they need a second messenger. They are going to knock the door, let's put it that way, on the cell membrane, that is the receptor. In the other side of the, of the door, there is a protein that is going to answer, and that protein is called the second messenger. All right, so we have the majority of, of the, the hormones are going to be proteins. We have other hormones that are steroid-based hormones. So, so please, I want you to remember this always, steroid-based hormones. If, if you already know that topic, please let me know because we can go and, and talk about more, more, more uh, advanced things. But, but here, steroid-based hormones, is why it's called a steroid? Who are steroids? A steroid are going to be all the sex hormones. Sex hormones, for example, testosterone, estrogen, estrogens, and progesterone. So those are steroids. And in addition to this, these hormones, we have another hormone that are called steroids too, that are the cortisol and is the aldosterone. Aldosterone, cortisol, uh, sex hormones, all of them are going to be uh, um, uh, hormones based on steroids. And these hormones, steroid-based hormones, are being called like that because they are coming from cholesterol. So we need cholesterol in order to produce all these hormones we I just mentioned, aldosterone, cortisol, and the other one, sex hormones. If you can see the name, steroid, steroid is coming from the word cholesterol. Cholesterol, esterol, steroid. So that is actually what is coming all these hormones in common. So we need cholesterol in order to produce these hormones. Okay, so uh, all these, these hormones in general are going to have similar pathway, similar pathway, and they are going to make activation of the, in the target organ. So what does it mean activate what? to do what in the target organ? For example, you have the growth hormone. The growth hormone is an hormone that is going to use a second messenger. A steroid and proteins are too big to pass the cell membrane. So what is doing this growth hormone, the second messenger, as we are going to see in the next few slides, they are going to transmit the, the communication towards the nucleus of the cell. So this second messenger that is in the mem cell membrane are going to transmit information towards the nucleus. And the nucleus, we have the DNA. And in the DNA, we have the, uh, the genes. And the genes are going to transcribe. So they are going to promote that transcription. Transcription means that to read the information of the genes to produce a protein. For example, growth hormone. What you're going to have, increase of proteins uh, from the cell. The cell is going to produce more proteins through the activation of the DNA. So I have a summary at the end, um, and I think we are going to go on that in a few, in the, uh, at the, um, this, we have 15 slides, but definitely it's very substantial every slide. All right, so here we have here we have what we call our second messenger. The second messenger, the second messenger is going to be uh, actually what we call the uh, is going to be activated by the G protein. G protein. The G protein, the G protein is that protein that is going to be uh, embedded on the membrane of the cell in the membranes and cell membrane. So these G protein are going to be activated, uh, is going to be activated, and these G protein have two subunits. These G, pro G proteins are going to have a, an action of stimulation or inhibition. Okay, so if you see here in this chart, we have the hormone that is binding the transmembrane receptor. 
this transmembrane receptor, this transmembrane receptor, and let me see if I can do see here to draw something here. The transmembrane receptor, uh, I'm going to just try to do just a moment. Uh, review, yeah, here. Okay, so let's go here and blow. Uh, okay, so the trans the transmembrane receptor is going to be if you have here, let's let's draw the the cell membrane. This is the cell membrane. Oh my God! Okay, I'm trying I'm trying to draw the cell membrane. Okay, these are the phospholipids. This is the double layer membrane. The double layer membrane the double layer membrane. So this is outside, outside, and this is inside. So what happened here, where is this uh, transmembrane protein? This transmembrane protein are going to draw it in yellow here. And the transmembrane protein is a protein, I'm going to make a weight here, heavier, that are going to be transmembrane. So it's going to be in and out in and out, it's like a cord, see, in and out. So what happened is that this is the transmembrane protein, it's a chain of amino acids, right? That is going to be like undulated up and down, up and down, going one piece out, one piece in. So this transmembrane are, is the receptor, actually. This is the receptor where the hormone is coming to activate this transmembrane cell and the G protein and the G protein are going to draw it in red. The G protein is inside here. This is the G protein. The G protein. Because this hormone again is a, ch a long chain of amino acids. They can is not able to pass. It's not able to pass the membrane. So what is doing this hormone is activating the transmembrane a receptor, this transmembrane receptor are going to communicate and activate the G protein. This G protein has two options. One G, G, G protein is going to serve for activation and the other for inhibition. Activation and inhibition. All right, so that is what we have so far. We have the hormone binds the transmembrane receptor. Let me close this. Okay. Then we have, they are going to couple here, couple the protein, the G protein. This G protein are go, is the activation of the second messenger. And the activation of the second messenger means that they are going to do something, this G protein. This G protein, what uh, is going to, um, to do is to... Uh, have the uh, activation of the ATP. So I will say that. Okay, let's, let's start. All right, so I'm going to continue here. Uh, I'm going to continue. In the, let me go here just a moment. I'm going to make a new slide. Okay, so what we was just saying is this. And this is very interesting and very important too for, uh, for this part of the course. Uh, let me have the time here. Uh, it's okay. Uh, color. Let's make it. Uh, let's make it white. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So we have the hormone, and you know the hormone is going to have a long line of amino acids, a, po a polypeptide. We have the cell membrane again. The cell membrane, the cell membrane, and the cell membrane. What is going to have is uh, the uh, this uh, protein that is the transition of communication with the G protein. This is the G protein, the G protein. So here we have, we are going to have the receptor, the receptor that is a protein that is going this way, is the transmembrane receptor. When the hormone is touching the, uh, the transmembrane cell, transmembrane uh, protein, they're going to activate the G protein. The G protein, what they are going to do is to activate, is going to activate, activate a 
uh, the G protein activate an enzyme. This enzyme is called the famous adenyl cyclase. Cyclase. And what is doing this adenine cyclase? This cyclase, remember ACE means uh, uh, enzymes. Okay? It's an enzyme. So we have the adenine cyclase, and what is doing the adenine cyclase is to turn, take an ATP, take, take an ATP and turn into CAMP, what we call the cyclic AMP. This is our second already messenger. That is our second messenger. So second messenger is the so the G protein activated the G protein is going to activate the adenine cyclase. The adenine cyclase is going to grab one ATP and change it into uh, a cyclic AMP. So what is happening in this process? And this ATP to cyclic AMP is changing something, right? We have three phosphates, and here we have one, uh, one phosphate, this monophosphate, right? So these phosphates that are uh, taken out from the ATP are here, for example. And these phosphates, these phosphates, what they are doing is to activate, activate another protein that is the protein kinase, protein kinase, protein kinase, another enzyme. This protein kinase is going to enter because it's receiving energy. So this protein kinase is being activated by the phosphorus that is coming from the uh, transformation of ATP to the CAMP or cyclic AMP. This phosphate, full energy, because phosphate is the energy, are going to activate the protein kinase. And what is doing the pro protein kinase? Very simple. They are going to go to the uh, nucleus, they diffuse into the nucleus, and they go to the DNA, and the DNA produce the transcription that the, a certain gene to produce certain protein or certain uh, uh, enzyme. Okay? I, uh, I, I want to know if that is clear, you want me to repeat it, or is uh, it's okay? I think I got it. Okay, so we are going to make a summary again. My interest, uh, uh, Sarah, is really to grab the concept very, very, uh, very, uh, very uh, in um, different ways. So we are going to repeat it again. Okay. At the end of, at the, end of the slide. So let's go to this, uh, uh, continue here with the pituitary gland. You know, the pituitary gland is called the hypothesis or master gland. We know already that. Uh, that is, uh, I, I ask my students in, in the residential groups, uh, what is pituitary gland? Uh, uh, nervous system or, or, or endocrine system? And the answer is in the world, right? Is endocrine system, complete. And we have the hypothalamic, uh, hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus uh, is, is part of the nervous system. That is the... Um, the joint that they coming together, the endocrine system and the, uh, and the nervous system. So that is what we call the homeostasis, homeostasis. And hypothalamus, and please remember this, I call myself the hypothalamus the big gossiper, the greatest gossiper in the body. So hypo, hypothalamus knows everything, everything. If you are cold, if you are thirsty, if you are dehydrated, if you are hungry, if if you are uh, a lot of temperature, or hot, whatever, everything. If you your pH of the blood is down or up, so who knows? Everything is the hypothalamus. Knowing that the hypothalamus, having the information, he, he knows what to do. So if you need certain hormones, they are going to stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete those substances. For example, if you are a kid, you are still, you are, you are still growing, so who knows that you need to grow is the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus is going to um, order the pituitary gland, endocrine system, to secrete the growth hormone. 
For example, if you are, uh, let's see, uh, uh, if you're lactating, so the uh, baby needs milk, and you are, uh, actually, you need uh, milk for, for the baby, who knows that, the hypothalamus, the hypothalamus, so it's going to stimulate the pituitary gland to secrete the uh, prolactin, prolactin, for example, right? If you are going to the liver, who knows who is going, you are going to the liver, the um, hypothalamus. So hypothalamus secrete, secrete the uh, oxytocin. Oxytocin are going to be stored in the posterior pituitary gland. Okay, so those are a few examples that uh, we, uh, I want just to go on that. And just returning to the previous slide about the activation of the, of the, um, of the second messenger, second messenger is, is any action that is happening in, in the body are going to go through that. For example, if you want to know about the uh, glycogen, for example, if you are hypoglycemic or you are fasting, who, uh, who, uh, who is going to know that? So they are going to produce actually a, a some a, a, a secretion of, of growth hormone because the growth hormone is going to work as equal as insulin. So what they are doing is to increase the uh, catabolism of glycogen from the liver into glucose. You know, uh, glycogen is a carbohydrate that is a polysaccharide, is the accumulation of millions of molecules of glucose. That is how you store. If you are fasting, the hypothalamus knows that and make the uh, make as a second messenger, the growth hormone are going to activate the cells of the of the liver to catabolize the glycogen into glucose, and the glucose go to the bloodstream to uh, provide energy. All right. So uh, here uh, we have we are going to talk about the growth hormone. And I want to share with you some mnemonic. I'm going to open. I'm going to open. And please never forget this. Probably should be could be the last chance we have in order just to share this with you. So we have. Uh, okay. So let me go here. Review. Start. Uh, let's go white. Uh, okay. Whatever. Uh, red. Okay. So let's see. So we have the anterior pituitary gland, pituitary gland, that is called the adenohypophysis, adenohypophysis, adenohypophysis. Remember that um, this gland are going to have many hormones to secrete. For example, remember the, the, uh, the pneumonic Gipital, Gipital F, Gipital F. Gipital, Gipital sounds very easy to, to remember. Gipital means growth hormone, a prolactin, T means TSH, A means ACTH, a L means LH, and the, uh, and the what? F is means F, uh, FSH. So we have the Gipital. So those are the anterior hormones of the uh, anterior uh, pituitary gland or adenohypophysis and we have the posterior that is the neurohypophysis neurohypophysis that is going to secrete two hormones right the ADH we are going to talk about that now today and the and the what and the um, oxytocin oxytocin okay oxytocin okay one he, one thing that we just need to refresh here please is the prolactin need to do with the mammary gland, correct? And the oxytocin, they need to do with the mammary gland too. So please, the prolactin, remember Gipital adenohypophysis, prolactin is going to produce PP, right? PP, produce milk, production of milk. Meantime, the oxytocin, oxytocin is going to be related to the mammary gland too, but it's going to produce the ejection that is totally different from production. Ejection of the milk. Ejection of the milk. Okay? All right. So this is something that we, uh, I just want to yeah, share with, uh, before we pass to the next slides. All right. So let's keep going. All right. So we have the growth hormone. In the growth hormone, 
you already we are going to have that we have first of all we need to remember that the name of the hormone the growth hormone second we are going to see a, a the uh, target organ the target organ and then the uh, uh, function right so for all all the hormones if you remember the name then the where is going to be the target and then where is what is the function of this hormone is actually what we really uh, need to uh, remember so the growth hormone the other name that is very high yield in many questions and many in many um, tests is the somatotropin somatotropin or growth hormone growth hormone is is an anabolic hormone you probably we 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 have the perspective now right because what is what does it mean anabolic anabolic means building up building up building up building up what building up proteins proteins so growth hormones for example in the muscles are going to make you create more proteins in the muscle because it's anabolic so uh, uh, there's a confusion that they think that anabolic are going to be testosterone only no all these hormones that are going to be the growth hormone tsh all the, all of them are anabolic because they are building up building up through the second messenger making orders on the dna to produce a protein or uh, an enzyme okay so there we have the uh, the growth hormone what is doing the uh, what the target organ are going to be muscles bones right muscles bones in general all the cells so classically we know that the growth hormone produces the you know, increased size of muscles and bones but the cells too in general the growth hormone is going to be needed for example to produce more collagen on the skin so that's where people now they use try to use uh, growth hormone in order to delay some the aging process of the skin for example because growth hormone is not only just for us so what is doing the growth hormone with the general cells are going to increase the size the size of the cells and the number of the cells so that is what is doing the growth hormone so that's why there is a lot of under the table uh, selling uh, growth hormone that they have some contraindications okay so now <clears throat> when you have too much or excess of uh, growth hormone the hormone that is going to be the opposite that is going to to uh, make a negative feedback of the growth hormone is the somatomedin the somatomedin, the somatomedin, when you have an increase of growth hormone in excess, so this somatomedin is the one who controls that there cannot be any excess of growth hormone because they can produce gigantism or they can produce acromegaly, as we are going to see soon. And this somato, so, uh, somatomedin is going, to be, is going to be produced by the liver. Liver. The liver is going to be induced so if you have too much growth hormone this activate the production of somatomedin in the liver somatomedin is going to have similar actions of the of the growth hormone size and number of cells but at the end what is doing somatomedin so somatomedin is going to increase the production of somatostatin somatostatin where in the in the uh, hypothalamus in the hypothalamus and that what is doing is to inhibit the secretion of of growth hormone okay so i hope that is clear about that so we have for example i'm going to put it here you have high growth hormone that is going to increase the uh, the production of somatomedin, somatomedin, where in the liver. This increase of somatomedin in the liver are going to go to the hypothalamus, and the hypothalamus are going to produce somatost, uh, som somatostatin. And what is in, doing this somatostatin are going to decrease the growth hormone. So here we have your negative feedback. 
uh, uh, please, I just, just want to mention some parentheses here. So matostatin can be produced by the GI tract too. The somatostatin is going to be uh, produced, and uh, what is going to do is is going to be produced by the uh, by the pancreas. And what happened is that uh, they're going. If you have the food passing into the duodenum, uh, the pancreas is going to release uh, the pancreatic juice, and at the same time, it's going to produce somatostatin. And everything what happened before is going to diminish. So if the food is already in the duodenum, why do we need more gastric acid? So what is doing the somatostatin is decrease the uh, gastric acid. That is at the level of the GI tract. At the level of the central nervous system, the hormone what is going to do is to inhibit the secretion of the growth hormone. So functions of the growth hormone is going to increase the protein synthesis is going to pro increase the lipolysis. This is interesting about the lipolysis. As you can tell from the name, lipolysis is that they are going to, uh, uh, you know, the fat in, in our cells, in the adipocytes, are being stored mostly as triglycerides, triglycerides, triglycerides. The triglycerides then is going to be taken by, with, for, with a growth hormone and the triglycerides are going to break it down into fatty acids. So what is doing this lipolysis? This lipolysis is going to uh, produce the catabolism of triglycerides to release fatty acids and to make our body to use fatty acids for energy. And we are doing what? We are going to spare the use of glucose. So what is doing this uh, uh, what is doing this growth hormone? If you spare the use of glucose, you're going to can you can have high levels of glucose in blood. So hyperglycemia. Okay, increase the glycemia in blood. That that is going to uh, actually uh, do this 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 action. Uh, they are going to be the growth. So in conclusion, look at this. So what is going to affect? If you have your diet, you have proteins, you have carbohydrates, and you have uh, lipids, right? So the growth hormone is going to uh, uh, affect all of them. Increase the production of proteins in the cells. They are going to increase the uh, levels of carbohydrates, storage, and glucose in blood. And they are going to increase the lipolysis. So those are the three things that we just need to always remember. All right, so let's keep going. So the release of stimulation of the growth hormone, there is hormones that are going to be stimulated in different ways. They are going to, uh, if you, you hear about the circadian rhythm, circadian rhythm. The circadian rhythm are going to be those cycles of production of hormones. For example, the FSH, the, LA, the LH, for example, they are going to be, be produced by pulses. Before uh, the beginning of the menstrual cycle, these pulses is going to be about every two hours, every three hours. Every two, three hours, a pulse. But as, as soon you get into the, into the 14 days for ovulation, the, 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 uh, the pulses can go higher up to 45 every... 45 minutes. Another thing that we, we have, for example, the levels of cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone. This uh, cortisol is going to be released by pulses too. And the peak of the cortisol is where we need it more. So cortisol is a stress hormone. And the cortisol, what it's doing is to release glucose into the blood. And why is that? Because cortisol is a stress hormone. We need cortisol every morning is how uh, how we are going to uh, we are going to use that energy the glucose in order to produce our activities in the morning so that's why cortisol is high is most from all day is going to be elevated during the morning cortisol so they have two functions for example one is to increase the glucose in blood another is anti-inflammatory etc and make you awake 
So if you have too much stress, these cortisol are going to be elevated in a, at night too. So that's why we suffer from insomnia once in a while. So cortisol, the peak is going to be during the morning, at 8 o'clock in the morning, for example, the cortisol. So all these hormones are going to have some rhythm. All these hormones are going to be produced a certain time of the day. For example, the growth hormone, the, uh, this growth hormone is going to be one, after, one hour after the sleep onset. Okay? It's mostly we have, there are going to be pulses through the day. Uh, secreted one hour after onset, onset of the sleep. So that is where it's going to be higher. So we sleep, probably my, my grandmama was saying, we grow, meantime we are sleeping, right? So that is a classical uh, phrase that I was hearing a lot of times, uh, many times. So we, we grow when we are during the sleep time. So it's because that, that is true. And because the growth hormone is going to be secreted, in uh, more amounts during the night. Stress, in times of stress, they are going to release the growth hormone. Why? Because if you can tell, if you're in stress, you need to resolve things. You need to have more mental activity and more physical activity to resolve the problems. So growth hormone is going to behave as insulin. So that's why it's going, it's because we, the, because because the structure, the chemical structure is similar to the insulin. It's not insulin, but they are going to behave like insulin in many, in many, in many, um, many situations. So if you are under stress, the growth hormone go coming up, what is doing with the carbohydrates? We, we talked already, right? We said already that it's increasing the glucose in, in the blood. Hypoglycemic state, so what is doing the... Um, uh, when you are hypoglycemic, when your levels of glucose are low, growth hormone is coming and uh, make release glucose into the blood again. So increasing the, the, the what? The glucose in the uh, uh, circulatory system. Exercises are going to increase the uh, growth hormone. So here we have the somatomedin. Somatomedin, just remember, is the, uh, the one who is going to have a negative feedback with a, uh, with a, um, with a growth hormone. Okay, so let's keep it going. Any questions so, so far, sir? Um, no, I think I'm okay right now. Okay, all right. So let's talk about the deficiency of, uh, of growth hormone in children and the excess on uh, puberty in adults. So what happened here is the children and children is mostly affected, right? Because those, those are the ones who, but look at this, this normally what happened with us. Normally when you have age, very young adult, what happened with the growth hormone? The growth hormone is going to be just down the hill all the way. So, and that is about 20s where the, uh, the, the level of, um, Growth hormone has become uh, very, very, uh, very low. All right, so we have here the efficiency of growth hormone. What happens? Children will not grow, right? So that is, uh, can we are going to see some dwarfism, and that's what we call symmetrical, symmetrical uh, lack of development. So all the proportions of your body are going in proportion are going to be lower. It's going to a decrease in size, so everything symmetrically is going down, uh, is going to be, um, is not going to grow. So uh, excess of, of, of growth hormones, for example, in puberty, is the is called the gigantism. Gigantism in adult is going to be called uh, acromegaly. So why is coming these different names? These different names because of the symmetry. Puberty, gigantism, they are going to be, uh, all the parts of the body are going to grow symmetrically uh, faster. Meantime, in adult, it's asymmetrical. It's, it's we have the acromegaly, and if you uh, saw some picture before, before about acromegaly, you will feel, you will see that, for example, we have prognatism of the jaw, so we have big jaw, they have big hands, 
uh, and do not keep proportion with the rest of the body. So that is the difference between. So why excess of growth hormone is going to change the giant or acromegaly because of this situation? Symmetric gigantism and asymmetric in acromegaly. All right, so let's go into the, um, this is part of the uh, ADH, is the antidiuretic hormone. And this antidiuretic hormone is, uh, is, is secreted and storage in the posterior pituitary gland. So one thing here, the posterior pituitary gland at, at, has a difference, it has a difference with anterior pituitary gland. The anterior pituitary gland produces all the hormones that we was mentioned before, the GP tau. But the posterior pituitary gland of neuro, uh, neuro hypothesis is, uh, is going to be just the storage of the ADH and the oxytocin. They are going to store these, uh, these hormones. Uh, they are not producing. So the neuro, uh, the neuro hypothesis do not produce ADH or oxytocin, but release them because they are being stored in the neuro hypothesis. Where are they coming from? They are coming from, from the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus produce the oxytocin, produce the ADH, and this ADH and oxytocin are getting deposited in the neuro hypothesis. And uh, uh, ad uh, additional stimulus are going to produce less or more ADH or ADH according to the needs of the patient. What is doing the ADH? The ADH is the antidiuretic hormone. We need to remember what is the target organ. The target organ, there is two target organs for ADH. One target organ are the vessels, arteries, that can produce vasoconstriction. That is not a topic today. The, the ADH, the second option, the second target is the kidney. And the kidney, what is doing the ADH is to reabsorb water. Where? From where? From the distal cumulate tubule and from the collecting ducts. So that is the target organ. So the primary, the primary organ of the ADH, it will be the, the kidney, the collecting ducts and the distal cumulate tubule to reabsorb uh, what water. Okay? So ADH, so antidiuretic. Diuresis means uh, uh, voiding, uh, uh, make pee, in other words, diuresis. Antidiuretic means that you are going to not accumulate the urine in the, in the urinary bladder, but to reabsorb more water. So at the end, you have less urine. Antidiuretic hormone. So when is going to, be, when we, are going to have an increase of antidiuretic hormone when we need to retain volume in our body. For example, if you have low blood volume, what happens? You have low blood pressure. If you have low, uh, 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 lower amount of volume of blood, your blood pressure can go down. So what is doing? Who knows that? The hypothalamus again. And hypothalamus, you say, okay, you are hypotensive, we need something to do, right? So let's secrete ADH and retain more water so the blood pressure go up again. So what is going to happen to an increase of serum osmolarity? Serum osmolarity is mostly given by the concentration of sodium. That is about 280 milli small, milli or smallest of concentration of, of sodium. If you have too much concentration of sodium, so that means that you are into hypernatremia, high levels of sodium. So what is doing the, who knows that, the hypothalamus? And what is doing the hypothalamus said, okay, ADH, we need to more, more volume because we need to dilute the concentration of the blood to, because it's, it can produce some arrhythmia, some heart arrest, etc. So that is how is that going to work. Another thing that ADH are increase is uh, patients having pain, patients are nauseous, nauseous, patients smoking cigarettes, uh, opium, opi opiate drugs like morphine, uh, uh, 
etc. So codeine. So those are actually increasing the uh, levels of ADH. Hypoglycemic state can increase the the ADH. So you retain you retain uh, more fluid. ADH release is inhibited by the opposite. But one thing, obviously, when uh, when somebody take alcohol, alcohol, the alcohol is in the, a diuretic. Why? Because have an of have an uh, inhibitory effect on the ADH. So ethanol stop the production of ADH, so you cannot produce antidiuresis. So you pee more, and that's how it's going. To Okay, so here we have the uh, the ADH are going to uh, be stimulated when you have low pressure, right? Low pressure in the uh, in the, for example, viral receptors. Viral receptors are receptors that are located in the, for example, in the left atrium of the heart. The left atrium of the heart are going to have these viral uh, viral receptors. What happened is when you have a, a low blood pressure, there that is going to stimulate the vagus nerve, go to the brain, and uh, they are going to form the hypothalamus. Hypothalamus knows everything, the big gossiper. And the hypothalamus said, okay, so you have low pressure. Oh, okay, so let's secrete ADH to retain what? Water. So they are going to uh, try to restore the volume and you know that just to remind you for example a uh, blood pressure blood pressure is cardiac output multiplied by peripheral resistance if you have vasoconstriction of the vessels peripheral resistance increase your blood pressure go up cardiac output go up the, pre the blood pressure go up what is cardiac output cardiac output is the volume and the heart rate. If you have more volume, your cardiac output go up, so your blood pressure go up too. This is a very simple formula that is actually I want to share it with you because that is probably going to be very helpful for many other other topics. Okay, so we have high pressure uh, in the uh, this is in in the previous one for low pressure in the left atrium in the heart for high pressure. For, uh, for high pressure, we have in the carotid sinus, it's in the carotid artery, actually, and the, and the arch of the aorta. So they are going to stimulate the vagus nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve, that is the cranial nerve number nine. And this, uh, what happened is if you have high pressure, what is going to do is going to inhibit the antidiuretic hormone. So you cannot have antidiuresis. So what happened? You pee more. Your volume go down, see? Your volume go down. If your volume of blood going down, your cardiac output go down, and cardiac output down, the blood pressure go down. Okay, so in cases of hypertension. All right, so here we have two different situations about the ADH. And the ADH, we have the diabetes insipidus, and we have the uh, CAT or CADH, is a syndrome, syndrome inappropriate antidiuretic hormone. And just to have here something, why is called diabetes insipidus? Diabetes is, you mean, is related to high levels of glucose, but in this is not the case. And it's called insipidus because there is no glucose in the, in the urine at all. So what happened here is that in diabetes insipidus, you're going to have low levels of ADH. And the uh, uh, anti the inappropriate diuretic hormone secretion is going to be increase of ADH. So one is are totally the opposite, right? Diabetes insipidus and CIHA. Okay. So here we have the absence of ADH secretion or lack of renal response, so low ADH, and here we have a tumor that uh, can be happening in the pituitary gland that increase the secretion of the ADH. So what happened here, and I have here a comparison here. If you have diabetes mellitus, what we have, we already have, we talk about this, low ADH 
and she had is going to be high ADH. So you have high urinary output. If you have low ADH, you cannot uh, have antidiuresis. So what you're going to do is to pee a lot. She had is going to be the opposite, right? So that is going to reabsorb a lot of, wa a lot of water. So the urine is going to be very, very few mLs. And low levels of ADH, high levels of LDH. Of course, we have hypernatremia versus hyponatremia, right? So in the hypernatremia is because you uh, you have uh, a, a decrease the ADH, so you pee more, right? So that means that you have less water in your blood. So the sodium is going to be uh, increased in concentration. Even it's the same amount, but you have less water where making the solution high concentrated in sodium. And that is going to be hypernatremia. And the she had is going to be uh, the opposite, right? Hyponatremia. All right, so we have here that we have dehydration and they are going to be overhydrated. Okay? All right, so that is about. So one thing here that is in common, and you will tell me why. Oh, well, I will tell you why, sorry. So both pre present excessive thirsty. Make sense or, or, or no? So let's, let's, let's think why. Why? Because this, first of all, if you are dehydrated in low ADH, in diabetes insipidus, you pee a lot, right? And it's called diabetes insipidus because it looks like diabetes because you pee a lot, but it's not diabetes. And obviously, you're going to be dehydrated. And what happened? You are going to be, a, um, a, you're going to have this a, um, dehydration. You need to drink water. So if you have, uh, oh, you're overhydrated, okay? So that is going to be in relation to the hyponatremia. So uh, here we have um, hypertonic urine excretion. We have increased water retention, hyposmolarity, and hyponatremia. So, and the reason of the uh, uh, increase the in, uh, thirsty is because of this overhydration because fluid are going to go somewhere else. In, so if you have edemas all over. So it's, dehydration is when you have, for example, a, a, the fluid is out of the circulatory system. That is the definition of dehydration. Let's talk about a few more things. Uh, we are talking about the oxytocin. Oxytocin, again, is a hormone secreted by the hypothalamus, stored by the posterior pituitary gland and released by the posterior pituitary gland under the orders of the hypothalamus. So oxytocin are going to have two main actions, right, or target organs. We have one target organ, the oxytocin is the uh, mammary glands, and the second target organ is going to be the uterus. Okay, in the uterus, produce the contraction of the uterus, especially during the delivery, etc. The oxytocin is going to be stimulated by the uh, suckling reflex. So baby, for example, is coming, uh, they want to breastfeed, they are going to look for the, for, the, for the mamilla and they are going to start squeezing with the mouth and they are going to stimulate the secretion of oxytocin. So what is doing, who knows that? Who is going to know that? The hypothalamus again. So hypothalamus said, okay, we need more milk, right? So uh, they are going to secrete more oxytocin, okay? Okay, so here, prolactin. Prolactin is, uh, is secreted by the, post, for, by the anterior pituitary gland. And this prolactin are going to be the, um, they are going to, pro, uh, you, you already know, right? Uh, you know probably that uh, when somebody is uh, producing milk, that is uh, like a, 
contraceptive method, right? Because women cannot get pregnant, or I would say 80% of the women do not get pregnant during the lactating uh, stage or period. So why? Because the uh, prolactin is going to suppress the gonadotropin releasing hormones, the GnRIH. So that is what it's doing. The prolactin, so if you have more stimulation of the baby trying to uh, uh, take milk more time, more longer, so you start to increase the prolactin levels. Prolactin levels decrease the gonadotropin release hormones, and the, if you decrease the GnRH, the gonadotropin releasing hormones, you decrease the levels of FSH and LH. So you don't produce follicles, FSH, you don't have ovulation, LH, okay? So there is something important here is to remember that the prolactin is released uh, when it's released the T, uh, TSH. I say TSH, the TRH is the thyrotropin releasing hormone is coming from the hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus, what is, is going to tell the pituitary gland to uh, secrete the TSH, the thyroid stimulant hormone. So one is the TRH, hypothalamus to the pituitary gland, and the other one is the TSH from the pituitary gland go to the thyroid gland. So they are going to release. So there are some cases that we have, we have hyperthyroidism, hyperthyroidism, and there is uh, some um, uh, production of milk on the, on the patients. Okay, so here we have, I want just to go back, and please, I, I, I just put this today, so I want just to share with you this new mnemonic here. GPTAL is for normal anatomy physiology, but here what we want to just uh, mention is the ones who use second messenger. The, uh, the second messenger are going to be the flat chump, flat chump. So that is actually flat chump, F, FSH, L, LH, A, A, C, T, H, T, T, S, H, C, C, R, H. C, R, H is produced by the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus to the pituitary gland. Hypothalamus secretes C, R, H. C, R, H uh, stimulates the pituitary gland to produce, the, the pituitary gland will produce the A, C, T, H that go to the adrenal gland. We have H, the human chorionic gonadotropin hormone. We have the ADH, MSH. MSH is the melanocyte stimulant hormone. That is the one who stimulate the melanocytes that are in the basal layer of the, of the epidermis in the skin. And we have P, the prolactin. All right, so here I make a, a small summary here. We have the first messenger that is the hormone. We already uh, uh, we already uh, mentioned that. Then we have the transmembrane transmembrane receptor that can produce many actions. For example, it can produce depolarization, can open channels of sodium, or potassium, chloride, and then what is doing the trans transmembrane receptor is going to stimulate the G protein, and the G protein have sub uh, subunits. One for stimulation and the other for inhibition. We were talking about the stimulation. And the stimulation, the G protein is called the G couple. This going to stimulate the adenine cyclase. And this adenine cyclase make the ATP go to the camp, that is the cyclic AMP. That is the second messenger, the CMP. What happened? The CMP second messenger is going to activate another protein in the cytoplasm of the cell that is called the PKA or protein kinase. This protein kinase, what it's doing is the CM, the CAMP is going to activate PKA and the PKA take a phosphorus. So this, this activation make the PKA take a phosphorus from one ATP to phosphorylate another protein that enzyme in the cytoplasm. That protein diffuses into the nucleus, 
and then activate that transcription of the specific gene from the DNA. Okay, um, that is about, uh, we did it actually one hour, that's, that's, that's good. So um, any question, please, Sarah? Uh, I think I'm okay right now, Dr. G. Uh, the, the explanations are okay, are clear. You Do you want some extra explanation? I can open another webinar if you need it, just uh, um, just to clarify all the things. What do you think? No, I think I'm okay. Okay. So please, uh, any question, please. I'm sorry, I, I answered the last time 21 hours after uh, your message, so I'm going to do any um, Maximum in the next 12 hours. Oh, no problem. I mean, I have your cell phone number now, so if anything urgent, I can just always, uh, I'll call you or text you if anything. Please, I will be always, always available. Thank you so much. No problem. Thank you once again. Okay, so have a good uh, rest of the weekend. Thank you much. Muchas gracias. Thank you.